In December 2022, something blew a tiny hole in a Russian Soyuz spaceship, alarming NASA. The Soyuz was docked to the International Space Station when it was struck, most likely by a micrometeoroid, and it is still there as of this time. The Soyuz vehicle, also known as MS-22, suffered a coolant leak as a result of the collision, making it dangerous to return astronauts to Earth other than in an emergency. And so, NASA is thinking of requesting that SpaceX strengthen their Crew Dragon's current shielding. Now let's find out more about this upgrade. Hello everyone, welcome back to Elon Musk Evolution, where we bring you the most recent news about Elon Musk and his multi-billion dollar companies, space news, and the latest science and technology. But before we begin, make sure you subscribe to our channel and click the bell icon so you don't miss any of our amazing videos. The Russian space agency Roscosmos has scheduled a launch of an empty Soyuz on February 20 in response to the hole made in the Russian Soyuz spacecraft. This launch is intended to bring the three crew members on board MS-22 back to Earth in September, which is about six months later than their original scheduled return date. The proposal was raised during a meeting for the commercial crew program on January 24, according to Space News, and NASA is currently in the early stages of discussion with SpaceX about potentially improving the shielding on the Crew Dragon capsule. Steve Stitch, the program manager for NASA's commercial crew program, said during the press conference that after an incident in December 2022 in which a small hole was made in a Russian Soyuz spacecraft, they started talking about the possibility of taking action to improve the shielding on SpaceX's Crew Dragon capsule. In addition, the news conference provided updates on the operations of the International Space Station and the impending SpaceX mission Crew-6, scheduled to launch on February 26. The systems of the Crew Dragon spacecraft named Endurance, which is currently docked at the ISS and was launched in October on SpaceX's Crew-5 mission for NASA, are in good shape and performing as expected, according to Sarah Walker, SpaceX's Director of Dragon Mission Management. Endurance was built by SpaceX for NASA. Two of the three crew members may be evacuated from the ISS in an emergency, according to Russian officials, using the damaged Soyuz MS-22. However, the return trip wouldn't be pleasant because the coolant system wouldn't be working. Sergei Prokopiev and Dmitry Patelin, two cosmonauts, are the two crew members that would travel aboard MS-22, according to Space.com. Frank Rubio, a NASA astronaut, would be the third crew member to board Endurance with the other four Crew-5 members in a lifeboat situation. Before clearing the transfer of astronaut Frank Rubio from Soyuz MS-22 to the Endurance spacecraft, NASA officials said they carefully considered a number of safety concerns during a press briefing on Wednesday. Endurance spacecraft It was important to make sure there was enough oxygen available to keep carbon dioxide levels as low as possible and to make sure the landing would be secure. It was necessary to repurpose supplies already on board the ISS in order to add a fifth crew member because the Endurance spacecraft, which could hold up to seven people, was modified to only have four seats. The CRS-26 vehicle, a SpaceX Dragon cargo capsule now docked to the International Space Station, has cargo straps that may be used to secure Rubio and his seat liner to the bottom of the Dragon if necessary, according to Steve Stitch, program manager for NASA's commercial crew program. During the Wednesday press conference, NASA Associate Administrator Kathy Luters referred to the upcoming period as one of the busiest increments in the history of the station and the launch of the empty Soyuz capsule, known as MS-23, as taking place during that time. Crew flight test, the first astronaut trip for Boeing's Starliner capsule, Crew-6 by SpaceX, and AXE-2, the second crewed mission by private business Axiom Space, are just a few of the numerous crewed missions to the ISS slated for the first half of 2022. The Dragon Endeavour will carry the first astronaut from the United Arab Emirates on a lengthy mission during Crew-6, Sultan al Nayadi, Russian cosmonaut Andrei Fedyaev, and NASA astronauts Stephen Bowen and Warren Hoberg make up the other members of the crew. As they wait for the launch of a crewed Soyuz later in 2023 to relieve them of their tasks on the ISS, the Soyuz MS-22 crew will also see their time in space double to a year in orbit. The expected date of MS-22's arrival is now set for late September. Meanwhile, the Congressional Space Medal of Honor will be given to the astronauts who were in charge of SpaceX's first Crew Dragon test flight, according to NASA, in recognition of their valor. The exceedingly unusual honors will be presented to retired NASA astronauts Douglas Hurley and Robert Bankin, 
in a ceremony on Tuesday, January 31st, by Kamala Harris, the current U.S. Vice President and Chair of the National Space Council. Beginning at 4.15 p.m. Eastern, NASA will broadcast the event live through all social media channels and on its own NASA TV program. Just 28 recipients have received the Congressional Space Medal of Honor since Congress authorized it in 1969. Only 11 were given to astronauts who were still alive, while the remaining 17 were given posthumously to the 14 astronauts and three NASA astronauts who perished in the 1986 Challenger and 2003 Columbia disasters, as well as the three astronauts who perished in the 1967 Apollo 1 catastrophe. The most recent medal was given to Robert L. Crippen, the first space shuttle pilot, in 2006 by former President George W. Bush. Bankin and Hurley were chosen for the award by NASA Administrator Bill Nelson, who also states that despite the medal's designation, the President awards this medal based upon recommendations from the NASA Administrator. It's challenging to think of a pair of astronauts who are more deserving of filling the void left by the 16-year period since the last Space Medal of Honor was given out. Bankin and Hurley had illustrious careers in the U.S. military and at NASA before the Dragon test flight for which they will be honored. After receiving his Ph.D. in mechanical engineering from Caltech in 1997, Bob Bankin worked his way up to the position of lead flight test engineer for the F-22 Raptor project of the U.S. Air Force. He was chosen as a NASA astronaut candidate in 2000, and between 2008 and 2010, he flew on two space shuttle missions. Bankin was picked in 2012 to head NASA's esteemed astronaut office, a position he held for three years before starting his preparations for the commercial crew program. Doug Hurley graduated with a Bachelor of Science in Civil Engineering in 1988 and was commissioned into the U.S. Marine Corps. He flew the F-A-18 for three deployments before switching to test flying for the Navy in 1997. Hurley has flown more than 25 different types of aircraft, and he was the first Marine pilot to fly the F-A-18 EF Super Hornet. He was also chosen to become an astronaut in 2000, and he participated in two space shuttle flights, including the 135th and last mission of the shuttle in 2011. For SpaceX's initial crewed Crew Dragon test flight in 2018, Bob Behnken and Doug Hurley were tasked with flying. They spent many years working with SpaceX before the company's historic astronaut launch debut, drawing on their backgrounds as engineers and pilots. Their suggestions are still used today in every aspect of SpaceX's Dragon program, including how the business educates both commercial and public astronauts and how the spaceship is built and inside. Bob Behnken and Doug Hurley made history on May 30, 2020, when they launched from American soil for the first time since the space shuttle was retired in 2011 and were the first astronauts ever to use a privately constructed rocket and spacecraft to reach orbit. Contrary to predictions, Boeing's Starliner spaceship was beaten to the punch by Crew Dragon, which completed its Demo-2 test flight with almost faultless performance. Demo-2's minimum duration of around a week was increased to 62 days since NASA was so confident in SpaceX and inspired by Crew Dragon's initial performance. After spending two months in orbit, Crew Dragon successfully undocked from the ISS, deorbited, re-entered Earth's atmosphere, deployed parachutes, and splashed down into the Gulf of Mexico, bringing Behnken and Hurley back to Earth in safety. The incredibly successful test flight made it possible for NASA to quickly accredit Dragon. A Crew Dragon spacecraft lifted on a Falcon 9 rocket less than four months later during SpaceX's first operational astronaut ferry mission for NASA. Boeing Starliner hasn't received certification in more than two years, and Crew Dragon is still the only spacecraft that can support the presence of NASA astronauts at the ISS. SpaceX is on schedule to fly Crew-6, the company's sixth straight astronaut ferry mission, no earlier than February 26. It is impossible to overestimate NASA's demands on SpaceX and the significance of Crew Dragon. In a significant way, the work done and risks taken by Behnken and Hurley are the reason NASA and SpaceX have access to Crew Dragon's crucial and currently irreplaceable capabilities. The situation of U.S. human spaceflight may be far worse off than it is right now if either astronaut had made a serious error or faltered during Dragon's Demo-2 test flight. An entirely new age of commercial human spaceflight was instead ushered in, thanks to the astronauts' flawless performance in each of their roles and the support of NASA, SpaceX, and the entire globe. Doug Hurley and Bob Behnken left NASA in 2021 and 2022 respectively, 
The 29th and 30th Congressional Space Medals of Honor will be awarded to them. On the other hand, the first of at least three expected missions funded by a billionaire, Polaris Dawn serves as the launch pad for the wider Polaris program. Jared Isaacman, the creator of payment service provider Shift 4, will pilot the journey on a SpaceX Crew Dragon spaceship no earlier than March 2023. Following the Inspiration4 mission in 2021, which Isaacman funded, this will be his second space trip. Polaris Dawn will carry four astronauts into space with the purpose of doing the first commercial spacewalk in SpaceX spacesuits, conducting scientific research, helping to support St. Jude's Children's Research Hospital in Memphis and raising money for the hospital. Although specific details on upcoming Polaris program missions have not been released, Isaacman has been outspoken over the future of the Hubble Space Telescope, which was launched in 1990 and has not been repaired since 2009. After SpaceX and the Polaris program proposed the concept of raising it to a higher orbit, NASA is now taking into consideration a private vendor to launch it to the renowned observatory. Two SpaceX employees with experience in crewed and uncrewed launches and mission operations, a former combat pilot and one veteran astronaut and business person make up the Polaris Dawn crew. In September 2021, the SpaceX Inspiration4 mission, which was under the command of Jared Isaacman, was launched into Earth orbit. He was 38 years old at the time of the Polaris Dawn announcement in 2022. Shift4 Payments was founded by billionaire Isaacman, who also paid for all of his crewmates' tickets and the trip itself. He has participated in air shows, a high-speed world circumnavigation, and he formerly owned Draken International, a company that trains jet pilots. His flying expertise totals roughly 6,000 hours. According to his Polaris Dawn profile, Scott Kid Potete, age unknown, is a retired U.S. Air Force Lieutenant Colonel and a pilot with more than 3,200 hours in a variety of high-performance aircraft. And that ends today's episode. What do you think of this episode? Let us know your thoughts in the comment box below. Please subscribe and don't forget to like today's video. We'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.